it is over. Connor Bedard called game against the Winnipeg Jets, scoring two, breaking his nearly two-month home goal the streak, as well as, you know, just getting this absolute massive win for the Blackhawks. So we're going to be talking about this game as well, some updates we have about the Blackhawks going into the next few weeks. But before we get into all of that, we know that 83% of you guys watching right now are not subscribed to the channel. So if you're looking for a spot to get all your Blackhawks news, you're in the right spot. Make sure to stay a while, sub to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the major news. But like I said, we have to discuss the game against the Winnipeg Jets where Connor Bedard called game in overtime, scoring his second of the game, and like I said, breaking his nearly two-month home goal of streak. The United Center went absolutely crazy, and it was an absolutely much-needed win. You can see Connor Bedard with the Vince Carter It's Over celebration after his first career NHL overtime winner. So, Nick, how important do you think this is for Bedard to obviously get the monkey off his back here and start scoring at home again? We've seen his production be absolutely incredible on the away on the road, and, uh, you know, it's inc crucial to have this back at home. So what do you think about the game as well as Connor Bedard getting the monkey off his back here? Well, for a low-scoring game, it was a great game. I mean, the, the Blackhawks held the chances down for the Jets. Uh, I mean, like, uh, the goaltending was great. Like, And this is a great team in Winnipeg, too. The Winnipeg Jets are seventh overall in the NHL, and obviously we know the Blackhawks are 31st in the NHL right now. So, obviously, like, it's a it was a little bit of a mismatch there. They were probably 32nd going into last night, actually, because I think they're only two points ahead of San Jose now. But uh, – so that being said, like that's that's an impressive win for this Blackhawks team, and to see Connor Bedard scoring the two goals in the game for the Blackhawks, the only two goals they had. What, can, what more can be said? It's all you can expect at this point. But he he had a great game. No, nope, you're absolutely right. I'm gonna pull pull on this a bit more. You know, uh, going into Wednesday, Connor Bedard hadn't scored at home since November 4th, nearly two months, which is a span of 13 games. He finally got the monkey off his back in the first period by following up his own shot twice. One being between the legs and then scoring on the second chance off his own rebound once again. Then potting his first career overtime winner in the NHL. Just an epic game overall. Uh, that's from Charlie Romeliotis on his 10 observations after every game. I do recommend checking that out if you don't, uh, if you haven't already. But there's more to this game than just Connor Bedard. Obviously, Connor Bedard was the, the highlight of the, the face of this game, getting the two goals, including the overtime winner. But we have to put a, uh, put a bit of a spotlight on Peter Mrazek as well. He's been incredible this season. He needs to, you don't seem to get the love that every other uh, every other guy on this team has been getting. You know, you obviously we have the spotlights on Kevin Korczynski, Connor Bedard, but Peter Mrazek don't get much uh, much fame, I guess, in this uh, this team with the team being as bad as it is. But Peter Mrazek. When he's on, he's on. That's the best way to say it. You know, this is just a sample of his last five games. But we've obviously seen many, many, many more solid games uh, from Peter Mrazek. Um, this just not even on this list. So yeah, I think we have to put a bit of spotlight on him. You know, p a potential trade candidate we've seen. However, we've seen from Kyle Davidson, we don't know about uh, the trade situation going into the deadline. and don't know about Peter Mrazek because obviously... He's keeping this team together. He's getting this team the win because Arvid Soderblom has been in a bit of a tough spot lately. And, you know, th that'll that'll smooth itself out at some point. But, Nick, and I, I want to ask you again, uh, what do you think the importance of having a good goalie on a team like this is? Because obviously the Blackhawks are not very good, but having a good goalie to keep you into games definitely keeps the morale high. So what do you think about having a guy like Peter Mrazek on this team right now? Well, you definitely see it with a lot of other teams sometimes. Like when you don't have a goalie back there that you know you can trust and you know you can you're you you know you can make those plays that uh that could be costly, but you're not afraid to make them because it, it might be the right play sometimes. If you know what I'm trying to say, like you're not afraid to make the 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 express pass, like the the through pass or something like that because you know if you give the puck away the goalie back there is going to make a save for you. Or you got confidence that the goalie can make a save for you. Now, that might not always be the right play, but to have the confidence to be able to do that starts with having a good net minder and a good defensive system. So I know they're working on the defensive system right now, but having a goalie back there like Mrazic is definitely helping out a lot. Yeah, and they, you know, they had Peter Mrazic for this little rebuild uh, that they've been having, but you know, I, I really do think Peter Mrazic is someone that you'd be willing to re-sign. Obviously, he's on the final year of his deal. Um, a lot of teams are interested in Peter Mrazic due to how good he's been playing. He's been kind of all over the NHL so far in his career. But I do really think this is a guy that you could probably keep over the next few years, whether you you know sign him to a one- or two-year extension. I don't think you sign him long-term, but if you want to keep him there for this rebuild, you know, if he's willing to stay, if teams are... Uh, not offering enough for him, and Peter Mrazek is obviously willing to stay. I mean, I would definitely give it a try. He's um, I, he's boosting a lot of this team's morale, getting them the wins, making uh, high danger saves. You know, there's a lot of stuff he's doing right on on this team, 
And uh, that's what they need at this moment. You know, they need everything that can lift them up as more than they already are. So, you know, Peter Morazic got an interesting future ahead of him, uh, whether it's on the Blackhawks, whether it's not. But we're going to keep an eye on this as well. Um, one more thing with, on this game. Kyle Davidson, though, like I just if I could just oh, yeah, interrupt have... you there for a sec. Kyle Davidson said that they weren't looking at trading some of those guys. I think this is one of the guys that you might have to as well, because we've seen from Peter Morazic in his career, he's had his moments and he's also had, like you said, he's up and down, right? Like he he's has his highs, he has his lows. I don't know if with these numbers that he has right now, especially on a team like this, it's very impressive that his value is going to get higher than it is right now or before the trade deadline. So I, I just, my point being like, I think that he has to trade Peter Morazic, but at the same time, it's important to build kind of a winning culture while in the rebuild. You're seeing that in a lot of places now with the rebuild. It's like teams are moving up a little bit. Like for example, in Montreal, like they, they're kind of trying to focus on the winning culture right now. They're obviously not going to make the playoffs, but they are only four points out at the moment. Uh, they've they got more wins than they do losses. When a lot of the fans, like I know, like myself, kind of prefer it to be maybe a little bit them to be a little bit worse than what they are right now. But I, I think in Chicago they're trying to do not the same thing, but they're trying to build sort of like a team that can win those one goal games and it's not getting blown out every single night. And Mrazic helps them with that. So a, a, as I think they should trade him, I think that's also important. So it's kind of 50-50 for me at this point. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be something to think about. He's been very good. I'm sure a lot of teams are going to be interested, but he's also the only goalie on this team that can really scrape a win. So it, it's going to be uh, a busy few months for Kyle Davidson to think about this, especially on the Peter Mrazek case. But uh, like you said, Nick, the one, the one goal game wins are some important things. And that happens a lot against good teams, which is weird for the Blackhawks. You know, they don't play well against bad teams, but they play very good against good teams. And this is another example against the Winnipeg Jets. Um, this is another one from Charlie here. It says, the Blackhawks seem to play much better against playoff type teams versus bottom feeders. My theory is they're focused on... Uh, their focus heightened because they're not on. If they're not in their A game, it could get ugly. This was an example um, of the Blackhawks competing hard against a very good team in the Winnipeg Jets. The opponent playing down to the Blackhawks probably has something to do with it as well. But this is another, you know, something that should you should take in every game. And I'm sure they do. I'm sure this is the mo the uh, the mindset going to every game that every NHL team is good and every NH NHL team can embarrass you. So taking this mindset in every game uh, is a huge piece of this. You know this future, especially like you said, Nick, with the, uh, the how young the Blackhawks are trying to establish a winning culture. Uh, it's important to know that you can get embarrassed in the NHL, and it is not hard. So you have to, you know, be on your A game at all times. And uh, you got your veterans. You've got your veterans yeah. there that know how to play against decent teams, and then you've got your guys. You've got a mixture of the veterans and the guys who are all trying to make a name for themselves and trying to keep a spot on the team. Because you know, there's like a lot of guys on this team that don't have a guaranteed spot. Like most of the defense does not have a guaranteed spot on this team. Uh, well, like I said, most of the team doesn't, except for, like, the veterans or whatever. So I, I think it's a mixture of the veterans and those guys playing well together against the good teams because, like I said, the veterans know how to play against the good teams, and the guy, the guys are giving their all, like, every single night. Like, the, those, uh, those players that aren't guaranteed, they're giving their all every single night. So I'd say that's probably something to do with it as well. No, yeah, absolutely right. You know, it's it, you gotta you gotta learn to win. You gotta learn that's gonna get ugly at some times. But, um, you know, they're they're doing their they're doing the good job against the the uh you know the good teams in the NHL. And it's just now, you gotta adjust the mentality going into these bad teams. You know, the NHL is the NHL, so there should be a set mindset. But the Blackhawks are, you know, they're doing better at it. You know, it's obviously not a great team, but. You can't really complain when they win against a good one. But one more thing here before we no. end this video off is just a little injury update from uh, what we have. This is another uh, screenshot from the 10 observations from Charlie Romeliotis. Um, he has here, um, Seth Jones is expected to start skating on his own near the end of the road trip. It means he'll likely be out at least five more games. Joey Anderson should begin uh, working his way back a little bit after Jones. And Andreas Athanasio, who has been out since November 9th with a groin injury, recently had to shut down his gym workouts because of the lingering issue. He visited a specialist and found the root of the problem, so he's expected to start up workouts again soon. Still no timetable for return. So we still do have a, uh, you know, a little tough situation on in the injuries here, and that's going to happen. Uh, some major ones we've seen. Alex Vlasic came back, and these guys, you definitely notice their absence. You know, the Blackhawks don't have much on this team, but when they're not there... It's definitely noticeable. So having these three guys back eventually will be a crucial spot. But Nick, what do you think about these injuries and uh, how important it is to have these guys back? But obviously, it's going to take some time. But what do you think about it? 
Well, the focus is definitely on Seth Jones there. Getting him back would be a massive, massive thing for this Blackhawks team. Like, you say what you want about his contract. The guy can log 25 minutes a night. He's got a long reach. He's a physical body. Like, he's a, he's a very physical presence in the lineup. You don't notice him, like, when he's there as much, like you said. But when he's not gone – you re- or when he's not there, sorry, you really notice it. And it's it's 25 minutes a game, like I said. That's almost half the game, and he's a big right-handed defenseman, which is very hard to come by in today's NHL like we've talked about before. So when you get him back, it's like a big acquisition to this Blackhawks team, and they're going to need it soon. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. We've said it about Seth Jones, like you said. He's – it's you know, you don't see him that often when he's there, but when he's not there, it's a huge hole to fill. And it's just – that's the whole – difference with a, such an experienced NHL defenseman like Seth Jones and then going to a lot of the AHL guys that the Chicago Blackhawks have in the NHL right now. So it will be nice to get all of these guys back when the time comes. Obviously, there's no reason to rush them back. They're not in a playoff place. They're not, you know, they're not going for wins. So let them heal up completely. And that's that's the mindset you got to be in with this Blackhawks team. You got to give them time. Uh, we've said it a lot, but the injuries... You can't rush them, you know, it's the simplest thing to say, but it will be massive when they uh, come back to the Blackhawks main roster. So we'll be keeping an eye on all of this, um, the injury updates, the games that are uh, forthcoming, but that's all we got for this video. If you did enjoy, make sure to give the video a like, make sure to subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already, but uh, yeah, that's all we got. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day. See you later.